Hi, my name's Owen Sillis. I'm the Managing Director of the Behavioural Insights team, uh, which was set up in 2010 uh, within the heart of the UK government in number 10 and the Cabinet Office. At the time, back in 2010, we were the first institution of that kind anywhere in the world. There were people working on policy who'd used behavioural science to implement interventions in the past, but we were the first institution dedicated to the use of behavioural science uh, in its application towards policy within a government anywhere in the world. Uh, in those early days, uh, it, was, it was interesting because a lot of people that we were talking to were a bit sceptical about the work that we were doing. You know, why nudge when you can just legislate or regulate? But over time, the story began to change. And that was largely because of the methodologies that we put in place and the results that we began to find, which uh, surprised even us back then. And there were always two aspects to the work that we did. The first was that we drew on ideas from the behavioral sciences, so psychology, behavioral economics, social anthropology. That was the first thing. Uh, and we often use those ideas to change in different ways uh, the way in which policy was implemented and then the second was that from the very early stages of the team we started to run large-scale randomized evaluations which you'll no doubt be learning about in other aspects of the course but the key difference between what we started to do back in 2010 2011 and typical policy is that we were we were testing these interventions that we were putting in place as we as we went along to find out what works and what doesn't work by comparing the new interventions with a control group, uh, uh, which was typically those using the business as usual processes. So since then, since 2010, we've run more than 500 of these trials. and We've helped governments around the world to set up their own units and we've expanded a lot as a, as a team uh, as well. So we're now working in the UK, in Australia, in Singapore and uh, across the US. Um, so things have really changed, uh, not just in the UK, but, but overseas too. I just thought I'd, I'd talk you through one of the, my favorite examples from the past uh, year or so, and that relates to an intervention that we call study supporters that was partly inspired by the work of Todd Rogers and others at, at Harvard. And the very simple idea behind this uh, intervention that we've been running in schools and further education colleges here in the UK is that very often people have in their social networks somebody who can help them to learn when they're at school or college but they don't have the license to do so and what happens in these interventions is that the individuals uh, nominate somebody in their social network who then receives a weekly text message with a little snippet of information about something that they can use to help that person to learn. So it might be telling somebody that uh, next week they have a test and maybe you can think about things that you can do to help that person to learn. Or it might be more general prompts like uh, this is something that you can do to support this, uh, this individual. And what we're finding is that it changes the conversation between those individuals and the, and the learner. So instead of coming home from school and having a conversation with somebody, it goes something along the lines of, you know, what did you learn today? And the response is, yeah, not much really. Uh, you have a much more granular conversation around the specific snippet of information that you've received. And we're finding that over the past two, three years in which these trials have been run, it increases both attendance and attainment in uh, schools and further education colleges. So we're really excited about that particular result. And the other thing that uh, we thought you might be interested in is that alongside this uh, range of interventions on the policy side of our work, we've started a big program that looks at the development of behavioural informed products. Um, we call this BI Ventures. Uh, and so, for example, one of the products that we have developed is called uh, Applied. Um, and any organisation, maybe even the organisation that you're working for, can use it to remove implicit bias from their hiring decisions, something which is really, really difficult to do by training, uh, but is relatively straightforward to do if you use a product that has already got the behavioural science built into it. And another is, is called Predictive, which enables any organisation to run very large-scale randomised evaluations, but in an online 
environment. So we're quite excited about that side of the team's work as well. And I think it shows you that once you start getting into behavioral science, uh, you start to realize that there are all kinds of new avenues that uh, make what was once uh, the implementation of policy into a really exciting area to explore. So good luck with the course and uh, hope you enjoy learning about the application of behavioral science.